now we are to this 2014 question paper. It has increased by 30 marks. It is 100 marks. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Out of 250, 100 question is directly from geography. Now, the second point is what type of question has been asked in the examination? Basically, UPSC is not interested in some very basic because it has already been asked you in preliminary examination in that particular stage. But now, what we can find, a very common trend, is UPSC is concerned with some special features, some special phenomena, some very unique event. And when it comes to natural resources section, it's a little bit of futuristic questions. I'll show you later. Some futuristic questions. And the second, and third thing is about the, you know, new trend that is happening. For example, monsoon affecting by El Leno southern oscillation the recent things that has been happened so basically it is three type of question they will like sometimes they go into some basics that is different and the fourth very important thing is we think it is just a general study geography so upsc won't go into that depth but upsc sometimes they go into some certain kind of depth understanding which i will show you again here now if you just go through this You can find why. It has already been assumed hot deserts are formed in the northern hemisphere in this particular degree. It has already been assumed by UPSC that uh, Asperium knows this, but why? Why? No formation of delta by rivers in Western Ghat. Why? Because this question has been asked because delta formation is a very general phenomena for a river. Any river that runs or that flows, delta formation is a very general phenomenon. But when the river does not form a delta, it becomes a unique phenomenon. And UPSC is interested in that particular section. And they will ask, these are, you know, the futuristic question that I talk about <coughs> regarding natural resources. Discuss criticality, uh, critically the availability and issues involved. These sections. These are when it comes to natural resources, it will be a little bit of futuristic. They recently, last year, they have asked about the shell gas in India. Now, okay. Now, if you go to the next slide, I will ask, uh, see. Look at this question. <coughs> Explain the formation of thousands of islands in Indonesia and Philippines. This one. Even for an optional geography student, it is a little bit a tricky one. But it has been asked in GS question. Because it has been formed by, you know, plate movement. That is entirely different thing. Again, oceanic, oceanic, you know, touching each other. But still, UPSC sometimes go into this extent also. So we should all be ready for this. To understand the basic framework of today's class, which will run for around two and a half hours, it's a revision class. I won't be going into all the details. There will be a little bit of jerkiness in the discussion that we will have because I will move from one section to the other. So there won't be an organic flow. But for that, you have to bear with me just uh, for around two and a half hours. Okay, let, let us start. Now, let us first see what is physical geography, important aspect. I have prepared some questions for this also. I will, we will see the unique features, unique phenomena, which are very important. Now, we all know Earth is from, can you see this, everyone? Now, this is core, this is mantle, this is crust, right? Now, when we travel or when we go from outer side, to the inner side, that is crust, mantle, and core, there are physical and chemical changes that happens. Pressure, temperature, density, chemical composition, everything changes. But today, we will be concerned with, there is a very special phenomenon, that is temperature. Now, when we travel, from, this is a temperature axis, okay? This is the depth in kilometer. When we travel inside the core of the earth, from the surface of the earth, there is a change in temperature. Temperature increases. 
continuously, very continuously. So some surface temperature may be around 20 degrees centigrade. On the core inside, it will be around 4,000, 5,000, 3,000 something. And there is a variation then. Now, the most important aspect of this is the temperature does not go on increasing linearly. Temperature abruptly increases. This is a temperature axis. So, see it is increasing very abruptly. Temperature increases very abruptly, very rapidly, you can see, in an exponential manner. And after that, after reaching a certain point, it increases gradually. And after that, it goes on increasing. See, so just imagine this. For each degree centigrade, temperature rises for every for, uh, for every 32 meters, there is a rise in one degree of temperature. So if we calculate this for 48 kilometers, it will be around 1,000 to 2,000 degrees centigrade. Now imagine in 6,370, just imagine. But in reality, we get here around 4,000 degrees centigrade. Now, the main focus will be this area. Temperature increases. Now, there may be a question why there is a rapid rate of increase of temperature in the upper region. The simple answer is, in this upper region, we find a radioactive substance. What is the radioactive substance? That is uranium and potassium. And the special property of uh, radioactive substance are they produce heat. So, uranium substance, uh, the radioactive substance are found not below 100 kilometers. It is 100 kilometer depth. So when the source of the heat is completely removed, do you think there will be a heat? No. Answer is very simple. So there is a rapid rise in temperature in the upper part is due to presence of radioactive substance. Now, <coughs> the Earth, we know, there is a plate tectonics that are going on in the plate tectonics. The earth is composed of different major and minor plate, and there is a motion continuously. Now, what is Wilson cycle? Wilson cycle is nothing but opening and closing, opening and closing of the plate, or the opening and closing of the ocean basin. It's known as Wilson cycle. You don't have to go in detail. I just, for a simplification purpose, gave you this diagram. Otherwise, the purpose of this is, it is very important. You all know what is plate tectonics. You all know, but in UPSC, sup suppose UPSC asks you about Wilson cycle. You know everything, just by this you might miss the question. That's why it's just a name, just a term. Remember this term. Wilson cycle is nothing but opening and closing of ocean basin because of plate tectonics or sea floor spreading, okay? now. But regarding with this Wilson cycle, there are two important aspects we are going to see. The first is about the rift that has been created in the African continent. You all know there is a rift that has been created in this region, the red line. You all know this. There is a presence of rift. Why? That is very important because this uh, this location is going through a particular phase under the Wilson cycle. Wilson cycle is opening and closing of ocean basin. Now, this is at a particular stage of Wilson cycle. See, this earth, there has been around seven to eight Wilson cycle, means opening and closing up of the ocean basin. So, but anyway, why there is a rift? If there is a question in UPSC regarding why there is a rift in this region of Eastern African region. Now the question is, uh, the ocean basin and the continental crust surface does not <coughs> conduct the heat in the same manner. The ocean basin conducts the heat very efficiently. On the other hand, the continental crust does not conduct the heat efficiently. So when there is uh, less of heat conduction that play, take place, the mantle below gets heated up tremendously and it will come a point, it will heat continuously on the crust and a time will come when this 
under tremendous pressure and heat, this will crack. And th there will be a rift. And gradually this rift will become ocean basin. It will again expand and gradually again there are certain other different, you know, plates in different locations. There will be a compression in that place. So it will again push. Likewise, opening and closing will take place. So that is the reason. So now I hope you understand why there is a rift on this region. The second thing is, and see, this is a picture of Ethiopia, okay? Such kind of reef is taking place in Africa. The power of technology is, even though we can't go to Africa, we can see it from here. Right? <laughs> now, when you come to Mediterranean region, this Mediterranean region, this Mediterranean Sea, this is Mediterranean Sea. You can see this is Portugal, Spain, Italy, this is Libya, all those. This is Swiss Canal. Now, this is Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea is closing up. So it is also at a particular stage of Wilson cycles. It may ask in question because this particular Mediterranean Sea is closing up. You all know what is MOR, that is Mid-Oceanic Ridge, that is present in Atlantic Ocean. Now, when you see this, this is MOR, it, you know, it will rise at the center of the, or any part of the ocean, and it will travel on the opposite direction. Now, when it travels in the opposite direction, this, please answer me this. Suppose there is, just indicate this one point and another point here, which will be much older. The one on the, near the continent will be much older because there is a new basaltic formation that is uh, taking place in mid-oceanic ridge. They will form, they will travel, form, travel, form, travel. So they will be traveling in this direction. When you travel in this direction, it will become more aged. When there is a, uh, when there is a more distance from the mid-oceanic ridge. So what will happen is, the, these are marine environment. So sedimentation will take place in this, sedimentation of many other types. Now, the sediments that will be formed on this side will be much thin because it has, you know, less time for sediment accumulation because it is very new landforms. But when it travels far, far away from the mid-oceanic region, it will become more aged. When there is more aged, it will get more time. When it get more time, accumulation of sediments will be much more. Now, there might be a question of why marine sediments above the basaltic layer goes on increasing with distance from the ridge. I have already told you the reason. So when you see the sediment profile of the oceanic basin, you will find more sediments on, on either side as compared to the region that is near MOR. Now, <coughs> we all know Earth is in a spherical shape. For example, it has been divided into many different sections. Now, if there is a movement, say for example, a, this, this particular this particular point, just imagine one thing, this particular point, to take a rotation along this axis, north pole, south pole, along this axis, it will take less time because the radius has been reduced. But for this point, the point which is here, it will take more time. Clear? Now, the same principle will apply. You know, there is a presence of earthquake on the transform fault near the MOR. Now, why there is at the... Uh, the, uh, at the first place, why at all there is a formation of transform fault? There might be a question, why there is a formation of transform fault? Because things happen for a reason. It does not happen just for the sake of happening. It happened for some reason. So, transform fault. 
Why it has formed in the first place? In order to adjust this motion, see, because earth is made up of different plates. Okay, so entire globe, there are different plates. So all these plates, they are in motion in different direction. So a plate which is here and a plate which is here, their motion will have to be adjusted in order to satisfy this entire arrangement. So just imagine, you need to imagine this. So while the uh, while imagine this is MOR, and in fact this is MOR, mid-oceanic ridge, when this plate travels in different directions, there will be a fall because there will be a lack of speed in one particular plate with the other. The plate which is more closer to the equator will travel faster, but the plate which is nearer to the pole will travel slower. So there will be a gap. So there will be a stress that will be built up. So when there is a stress, there will be a creek. And when there is a creek, that creek is known as transform fault. And you also know when there is a motion between a different plate, there will be an earthquake. So that is the reason why earthquake occurs near mid-oceanic ridge. I hope it is clear. Please interrupt me n number of times. I'll be much happier to explain your doubt. Because the purpose of the this exam is, uh, this, uh, you know, this class is to invite you with as much information and knowledge that is possible. That is the only end, nothing else. Let us see this. What is the difference between magma of continental volcano and oceanic volcano? There are two types of volcano in, a, in brief, the types of volcano. One is continental, one is oceanic. Oceanic, simple term, oceanic is when the, uh, when the, when the magma, uh, magma travels from the mantle and comes out. And it is 100% basaltic in formation. But continental volcanoes are how it has been formed. How continental uh, volcanoes have been formed. This plate will travel here under intense pressure and temperature. This plate will melt. This particular belt is oceanic belt, uh, plate. Oceanic in essence, this is basaltic. So this basaltic will melt gradually it will come up. While coming up, it will take this continental sedimentary rocks also along with them and it will erupt. So, continental volcanoes are known as andesites because it will contain a little bit of crust, uh, <coughs> continents rock, little bit of oceanic rock, that is basaltic. But on the other hand, oceanic volcanoes are entirely of basaltic in origin. Now, second, again, one important, one important point is the difference between anyone, the difference between the volcano that is happening on the Andes, you know, the South African continent, the volcano that is happening in Andes region, and the volcano that is happening in the Mediterranean region. That is, in Mediterranean region, you have Strombolian, Vesuvian type of, many type of volcanoes. So anyone, what is the basic difference between the volcano that occurs in the Andes mountain chain, on the other hand, the volcano that happens in the Mediterranean region? The basic difference is this, in Andes type of volcanic eruption, the volcano happens at the mountain range, at the mountain range. But just imagine this, say for example, this is Alps in the Mediterranean region southern part of Europe, Alps, means on the uh, French Switzerland area. It is Alps. Below that, imagine this is Mediterranean region. Now, according to the volcano that happens in the Andes region, even here in the Alps region, volcano should happen here. Means volcano should be present in France, it should be present in Switzerland, but volcano is present in the Mediterranean region only. That is one of the basic difference. Why? The reason is a little bit complex and that is out of our syllabus to discuss. You can just write a line about that and that line is because of the geological complexity that is taking place here. And the other reason is <laughs> nothing more than that. If you want to answer something more than that, you'll have to study geology. And by studying geology, we won't be able to clear UPSC. <laughs> now, there are 
with plate volcanoes that are taking place continuously and some are relic of the past look look here this is a plate this is a plate and can you see this arrow yes. it is traveling in this direction and there is a source of magma it is known as a hot spot the characteristics of hot spot is it is a fix it is a fix it is not mobile but on the other hand this plate is mobile so just imagine this location here okay just imagine in geography you need to use your imagination power <laughs> so now this point is here now there will be a magma which will be which will be coming out the lava which will be coming out and since this plate will be moving in this direction but this remains stationary this will go here now gradually again more plates move uh, motion so this will go far away from the source of the lava right now before at one time this was at the edge of the plate or just imagine at this side near the hot spot but now it has traveled much further away so there is a volcanic landform in the Sahara region central Sahara can you imagine it is very difficult to imagine a volcano in Sahara region it is a completely a desert and there is no plate motion because generally volcano and earthquake happens at the plate boundary but there isn't any plate boundary but there is a volcano in Sahara region the reason is simple which I already told you because of the hot spot and even in the Hawaiian region there is a volcano and it has already been there are different type of volcano which is again a very which you might already know the mantle plume <coughs> that form hot spots are thought to be relatively stationary while tectonic plate are not as the plate continues to move away from oceanic volcanoes the volcanoes cool and subside producing older islands atolls and seamounts as continental volcanoes move away from a hot spot they cool subside and become extinct in this way hot spot can produce line of volcanoes known as hot spot tracks this i've already explained this is the basic difference between mediterranean and and this type of volcano what are fissure gap, gaps? These are the geomorphological. See, in geography, the terms are very important. Ge the effects of earthquakes are many. But when it is specifically asked what are the geomorphological effects of the earthquake, it is very important to write these terms. Without writing this term and trying to write something else, won't fetch you any mark in geography. Because in geography, geographical, terms are demanded so feature gaps other avalanche you all know sediment slums alluvial plain compaction actually what happened is alluvial I'll explain this alluvial plain compaction imagine this is a soil now we know soil is in the state uh, consists of liquid solid and gas now there is a liquid that is present in the soil now because of the earthquake there will be vibration that will be created here when vibration will be created there will be a compaction that will take place when there is a compaction that will take place the water molecules or the water particles which is inside the soil will be ejected out that is known as alluvial plane compaction and that is the reason why during the earthquake sometimes water is ejected out from the surface so that can be a caution in UPSC don't you think so because earthquakes are happening very recently in the Himalayan region and there are instances of such kind of earthquake related flooding not because of the thrust of the canal or a dam but by itself and that is because of alluvial plane compaction feature caps are just a cap suppose you will find in uh, earthquake related areas the roads are you know completely there is a wide cave in the road all those are known as feature caves sediment slums are huge in the riverine region or in the mountainous region lots and lots of sediments 
we uh, they will just slump down. Okay, it's a very simple term. Important points are this: you might, some of you might be aware, some of you might not, but this is homoseismal line. That is connecting the points of earthquake happening at the same time. That is known as homoseismal line. And the other thing is intensity destructiveness line connecting the place where intensity and destructiveness, same intensity and same destructiveness, they are known as isoseismal line. These are feature no that is related to earthquake. Now, when we come to volcano, fissure uh, eruption is related to volcano. What is fissure eruption? A long fissure or series of fissure cracks, no explosion, pyroclastic solid rocks of different size material are absent. What is pyroclastic? This is a geographical term. You need to remember this. Pyroclastic is nothing but rock, uh, solid rocks of different sizes are called pyroclastic. When volcano happens, lava will come out. The lava sometimes may not contain any solid rocks. It might just be a fluid. If it is a fluid, it is not pyroclastic. When there is a rock of different sizes, it is known as pyroclastic. No volcanic cone but plains and plateaus. No pipe directly to the magma chamber. Okay, these are the characteristics. Please interrupt me if you can't follow this. Because of paucity of time, I'll be just running around the slide. Look at this. This is a feature eruption. And see, this is a crack. Means what? This is a feature cap. And this fissure gap may be because of many reasons. <coughs> One is about heating of the mantle, creating a fissure. Second is about if there is an earthquake, there will be a fissure gap, which we have just explained. And along this gap, there will be a magma or the lava that will be flowing. And this is known as fissure eruption. In fissure eruption, no explosion. No volcanic cone is formed. No, when there is no cone, no crater, nothing. This is the best, this, uh, and such kind of example you will find in the formation of lava plateau of India, or the Tekken plateau. Can you just imagine, look, there will be a flow, another flow, and after millions and millions of years. In India, in certain, uh, in certain location in the uh, Tekken plateau, the height is somewhere around 4,000 to 5,000 feet of lava deposits. And that has happened because of this, layers after layers. Let us look at some of the climatic features, important climatic features. Let us see the ocean, ocean currents. What are these? These are ocean currents. This is warm ocean current. This is cold ocean current. Now imagine, ocean current, what is the main responsibility of an ocean current? One of the main responsibility or the role of an uh, ocean current is distribution of heat globally. So, in a very simplistic term, we can find the polar region, the, the equatorial region, that is zero. Can you see this? The zero equatorial region, this is polar region. There is a heat, excess of heat or surplus of heat in the equatorial region. But there is a deficit of heat in the polar region. So automatically, there will be a transfer of heat from equatorial region to polar, and it will, there will be a transfer of cold stream from polar region to the equatorial region. Now you see at this latitude, at this particular latitude, where London is. If you come towards the east, there is an important desert here. What, what is the Kobe desert? Is it a cold desert or hot desert? It is a cold desert. But if you go to where, uh, but just see at London. London compared to this latitude, it is having a very mild temperature. And that is because of the Gulf Stream. Means this Gulf Stream takes the heat surplus from the equatorial region and bringing warm air to this. Second thing, just focus in this region. Here is a desert, that is Sahara Desert. And desert has been formed because of very warm, warm type of temperature. But on the same latitude, there is a California. 
but California is having a very mild climatic condition as compared to this latitude. Why? Because there is a cold current that is flowing. Can you see this California? So this is, if in the exam, see, you know everything, okay? you know everything, it's just a repetition. But if in the question, if they ask a certain location, a specific location, it is just a direction you need to follow. If in the exam they give like Western Europe or California, you need to bring such kind of question. Or in, uh, in the exam, they might not give London or California, they might give some region in the Southern Hemisphere also. So what I'm saying is, I'm not going to take all the location and say, but I'm just giving you a hint. You need to prepare in this direction. Heating of low, uh, lower layer of the atmosphere is basically not because of nearness of the source of the heat, but because of the presence of water vapor, water vapor, dust particle. Suppose, for example, this is a surface. There is a sun insulation, short wave, reflected, long wave, you all know. But imagine, suppose there is no, nothing to capture this outgoing sun rays or the outgoing insulation, there will be no heat trap. The capturing of heat will be zero. So if there is a place here, if you say this, the heating takes, takes place here because of nearness of this reflecti reflecting surface, that is not so right. But the main important thing is the heating of the earth takes place because of the presence of water vapor, dust, carbon dioxide, methane, because they capture heat. They capture heat. That's why it becomes warm. But as you go above, it becomes the particle, the you know, uh, water vapor, it becomes less. That's why in troposphere, temperature gradually decreases as we go along the height. Now, look here. There is a gradual decrease of temperature at this till this point, that is tropopause. But from here, in the stratosphere, there is increase of temperature that is taking place. What is the reason of this? Because see, this, the warm air will go up, it will dissipate heat, it will become cold, it will contract, it will become dense. That is the basic principle. Now, it will become dense, it goes higher up. So again, it will go, it will become cold, it will become dense. A point will come where it becomes so dense compared to the surrounding parcel of air, it can't go any higher. So what is the ultimate direction to go? It can't go in this, you know, with some angle, some projectile motion. It has to come down. It is the, because that is the only possible direction. So it will come down. And that particular phenomena happens in this region. That's why when air, parcel of an air goes up, after reaching this point, it will come down. So all the weather phenomena, be it a cloud, be it a rain, everything happens in this region. Why? Because rainfall happens because of convection. So convection current is one of the most important rainfall. So all the weather phenomena will be confined in this. Why? Because the convection current established at the atmosphere is cut off at this particular point. So convection current rise up to outer boundary of the troposphere. The reason is there is a sudden trouble, lapse rate. Lapse rate in a sense, it becomes so dense, it cannot go any further. So it will slump down. This is stratosphere. From this slide, you know, in stratosphere, there is an increase of temperature with height. Remember that. Now, this is equator, this is polar region. One of the characteristics of stratosphere is, I have taken this point because there is one unique feature. Look, the, th the height of stratosphere is much nearer in polar region, but it is much higher in equatorial region. Now, so, 
there is a gradual increase of temperature in stratosphere. So for example, this is also a stratosphere, lower part of stratosphere. This is also lower part of stratosphere. Just focus at this pointer, okay? Lower part of stratosphere, lower part of stratosphere. For example, this is minus 30 degrees centigrade. This will also be minus 30 because both are lower part of stratosphere. Now, in stratosphere, temperature rises as we go along the height. So minus 30, suppose here at this point it is zero because from minus 30 this increase to zero. Now in this particular location, here will be zero. Now, so what will happen? Suppose if I draw a horizontal line here, it was minus 30, it was minus 30, zero was somewhere up here, it was minus 30, we started with minus 30. Now, but if I draw a horizontal line, it will be positive 30 somewhere. Are you getting this point? So now if I draw a horizontal line here, there will be a gradual increase or decrease of temperature from equatorial region to the polar region. Increase. increase. So if UPSC asks you this question, can you answer? It will be a left hand game. Huh? <laughs> temperature gradually increase from equator towards the pole. Why? In stratosphere, okay? You correct the question. It is temperature in stratosphere gradually increase from the equatorial equator towards the pole. Why? You know the reason why. <coughs> you all know there is a temperature inversion that takes place. Inversion of temperature, just to give you an idea, temperature inversion is nothing, but just we have discussed now, as we go upper in the up the, uh, upward direction, temperature decreases. But sometimes, because of <coughs> many climatic activities, sometimes temperature increases. As we go up, temperature increases positive. This is known, this phenomena is known as temperature inversion. It was asked last year. Now, there are two types of temperature inversion. One temperature inversion is simple, which you all know. The second is the frontal temperature inversion. You know the fronts, the front that has been formed. So in front, so in normal temperature inversion, the inversion plane is horizontal. This is surface. This is somewhere in the atmosphere. Temperature inversion, suppose you are going to draw a line, it is horizontal like this. But on the other hand, inversion that has been created in the polar front are always inclined. That is another reason, difference. And the second difference is, there is abundance of moisture in the frontal inversion. But there is less of that particular moisture content in the normal horizontal inversion that takes, that takes place. These are terms, please keep in mind, these are very simple. You know all the phenomena, but just the terms. And if at all they ask you this, you need to remember. What is isonormals? See, this is equator, as we go, Towards the polar region, temperature reduces. Imagine we have a non-rotating Earth. Non-rotating. We have a non-rotating Earth. Here, if we are supposed to throw a temperature belt, it will be there will be equator, there will be more heat here, less heat, lesser heat, it will go. But because of rotating Earth, an unequal distribution of land mass, this idealized temperature belt with, will not stay the same. It will go up and down. Now, the thermal anomaly has been created. And what is thermal anomaly? Difference between the observed mean temperature, observed, that is, which goes up and down. Okay, observed and mean temperature of their parallels means on the idealized earth. Suppose if you just locate one point and you just say according to this latitude, this temperature will be this much. 
but if you really go and see or observe, it will vary from the assumed one. That variation. And in each and every place in the globe, there will be that variation. And if you connect all those variation points, the line connecting them are known as isonomous. Just remember the terms. You all know this. There are Hetley cells, different cells, okay. There is one thing that is known as blocking effect. What is blocking effect? Blocking effect caused by Coriolis force. And this is one of the reasons of hot desert also, which has been asked in the previous exam. But we are not interested in why hot deserts are formed. We are rather interested in the blocking effects. Now, blocking effect is, say, please follow the pointer. There will be a heat and there will be air that is rising up. Gradually, it will go in this direction. It will come down. It will form a cell known as a cell. But what will happen when this air at the upper atmosphere goes towards the pole, you know Coriolis force. That is, it diverts towards the right hand side in the northern hemisphere. So what will happen is it will go in this direction, right? So, and the second property of Coriolis forces, it increases with increase in the speed or from the distance from the globe. Uh, from the equator. So now it will gradually, gradually, it will, first it will make some angle here. It will be more angle, more angle. And when it comes to this point, it will be completely a 90 degree as compared to the original direction. So it will be in this, in this direction. Now, this wind will block the other winds that are coming in this inclined direction. And it won't allow any of this wind to transfer into this location not on the surface, we are talking about upper atmosphere. So that kind of blocking due to Coriolis force is known as blocking effect in the upper atmosphere on the northern side of Hetley cell. You know this term, thermal wind. What is thermal wind? One is, what is jet stream? What is Rossby wave? All these are connected to one another. Very simple. But these phenomena are very important because it is directly or indirectly affects the entire climatic condition of the globe and particularly the monsoon in our country. Now, look at this, uh, look at this diagram. In, uh, this is equatorial region, this is polar region. Now, the previously we have discussed about the temperature, but here, now the pressure, pressure belt. We know pressure decreases as we go up in the vertical plane. The pressure will be maximum at the surface and pressure will gradually decrease as we go up. Now, this is 1000 MB millibar 980. But one characteristic is, this is in equatorial region. When it comes to polar region, the pressure belt compresses. Means at this particular location, say for example, if I draw a horizontal line, equal pressure on both the surface. But if I go somewhere around 100, uh, 100 meter and it is 990, if I draw a horizontal line, it will be a little bit less than 990 because 990 is already here. So in the Polar region, 990 will happen, not in 100 meters, but somewhere around 80 meters. So, again, again, that is 200 meters, just example. The difference will be much more. And you also know, there is a geostro uh, geostrophic wind. The wind that flows because of differences in temperature. So, temperature flows from what? From higher pressure region to lower pressure region. That is known as geostrophic wind. Now, this is at a much lower pressure as compared to this pressure. I hope you understand this concept because it is very important to understand this concept. Only then we will understand this, this, and this. Clear? Now, 
there will be a lower pressure here, higher pressure here. So this air, parcel of air will travel from high pressure to lower pressure, horizontal plane. But while it travels, what will happen? It will direct, it, uh, it will change its direction because of Coriolis force. Now, as we go up high, the speed of the wind will increase because the pressure differences will increase. So if I draw the velocity or the speed profile of the wind, <coughs> it will be somewhere like this. This axis, this direction, take it as a velocity. Less velocity, more velocity here. So if we go up high along a vertical plane, the higher we go, the speed of the wind will be much higher. This particular wind at a global scale is known as thermal wind. This is thermal wind. And jet stream is nothing but it's a thermal wind. Thermal wind and jet stream, they are the same. So if they ask what is the reason of or how jet stream has been formed, this is the answer. And now, how jet stream and Rossby wave are same? Jet stream or thermal wind will be there, but it will be in, encapsulated within the western disturbances. There is a phenomenon which I assume you know. So this particular jet stream or the thermal wind will be encapsulated under some disturbances, and that entire arrangement, along with the disturbances, are known as Rossby wave. These are Rossby wave or jet stream, you can say. They are very similar, one under the other, okay? So I hope you are clear with this. What is thermal wind, what is jet stream, and what is Rossby wave? wave? That is in brief. Now, the upper circulation, this upper circulation affects the climatic conditions on the surface that we all know. But how it has been affected? What is the direction of anticyclone in west in northern hemisphere? Clockwise. So cyclone will be anticlockwise. What is the direction of this? Suppose, for example, just uh, just take this this direction. It is a clockwise. Clockwise. Clockwise, right? When it is a clockwise, it is anticyclone. Yes. But this is in upper. But this is in upper atmosphere. Corresponding to this, when there is an anticyclone, there will be a cyclonic formation here. So there will be a anticlockwise direction here. This is clockwise. This is anticlockwise. So due to this jet stream and western disturbances, it affects the climatic conditions on the lower side of the atmosphere. Remember this relationship. When there is anti-clockwise, uh, when there is clockwise, this is if it is in northern hemisphere, it is anticyclone on the upside. Corresponding to that, there will be a cyclonic formation in this region. Just remember that. <coughs> you can just see different types of jet stream. One is polar jet stream, which flows from west to east, westerly subtropical. Tropical Easterly Jet Stream. This I will explain in further, de uh, in further detail. I've just listed them. And there are jet streams that are formed not because of, uh, not in the global scale, but in a very local scale. And the reason for that formation is because of local, one is local condition and the other is the uh, atmospheric dynamics, means the temperature, pressure, locations and many other factors. One of those local jet stream you can find in Somali region, they are known as fine ladder. One important question is this, the stratosphere which remains dry, cloudless in the absence of water vapor, develop occasional cirrus clouds. Why? Anyone? Yes? very close but exactly
Sometimes this jet stream, sometimes this jet stream due to high velocity and intensity of this, they break through this tropopause. They break through this tropopause, goes into stratosphere. During that time, it takes the chemical, uh, it takes the water vapor or the, any other particle that is there in troposphere to stratosphere. That is one of the reasons why, because see, the convection currents goes only up to tropopause. So when convection current goes only up to tropopause, all the climatic activities are confined to this region, surface to tropopause. But as we studied in types of the clouds, we find some clouds in this stratosphere. But their origin is not this. Their origin is this. But here is a tropopause. How it can go there? The reason is due to jet stream breaking through the tropopause sometimes and carry the particles that are present in the tropopause, uh, troposphere to the stratosphere. And that is the reason why some climatic activity happen on the lower side of stratosphere sometimes. Clear? Triggering of cyclone and anticyclone on the surface by jet stream we have already discussed. Jet stream maintains the chemical composition of the atmosphere, oxygen and nitrogen, uniform over the globe. Please remember this. One of the reasons for mixing of atmospheric, par, uh, atmospheric gas that are oxygen, nitrogen, jet stream is one of the factors. In oceanic circulation, oceanic current is the agent through which the heat is transferred from one location to the other. But at the atmospheric level, or when we talk about the air, jet stream is equally important, just like ocean currents. It aids in navigation also, jet stream. When it goes with the jet stream, the speed of the fighter jet or the commercial plane, it increases. And when it is against the headwind, it reduces. Even in India, you can experience that. Because in India, on the, uh, on the winter time, there is an establishment of easterly jet, which I will tell you later. And that affects the speed of the aircraft that flies up there. Southern oscillation at LNO, they have already asked in the previous exam, so I won't be explaining now. Let us come into the polar region. When, you, when we talk about <coughs> climatic conditions or the physical aspect of the entire globe, in many standard books or coaching and study material, we are more confined to the things that we have discussed, like the physical features about the climatic conditions, monsoons, everything. But there is a less and less mention of polar regions. And the polar region significance are increasing day by day. One is because of the most important thing is about the climate change, melting of glaciers, and the other important aspects are the natural resources that has been discovered in this region. So just quickly, let's through, uh, go through in order to appreciate what is the polar region? The, see, in polar region we will be specifically confined to the some climatic events or the climatic phenomena. Because in polar region, as we all know, it is full of ice. Miles and miles of ice. Ice, ice and ice, nothing else. So there are no vegetation as such or any other activities. So our basic concentration will be on the climatic activity because that is the most important aspect of the polar region. The lowest surface temperature, air temperature, is recorded in this station, Ostok station that is in Eastern Antarctica. So that one of the lowest temperature on the Earth's surface is in Antarctic region. So this is itself is very important, climatically. And when I say climatically, climate is related to the natural vegetation. Natural vegetation, that is flora, is related to the fauna. A again, the animal life, different sea creatures that are there, and there are many other related things. 
everything works in a system, in a systemic way. It's an ecosystem type. Therefore, when temperature is important, everything gets uh, affected. Why is it called in Antarctica? Just uh, very simple. The angle of the sun is very low. One reason. Second is, during winter, there is complete six months of darkness. During that time, there will be a radiation from the surface of the Earth towards the atmosphere. Because see, the basic principle of heat, heat travels from higher temperature to lower temperature. But the definition never told us that travels uh, when it is uh, the flow of heat will stop when minimum temperature is something around zero degrees centigrade. Never. So if even if it is minus zero. If it is something minus 40, minus 60, heat will still flow. But from the higher to the lower. So it will flow from minus 40 to minus 60. So even in this polar region, even though it is very low temperature in the surface, the atmosphere becomes so cold, the heat will dissipate from the surface of the ice. And gradually again, it will lower down the temperature. That is one of the reasons why Antarctica is very cold. See, Antarctica is much colder than Arctic. Arctic is also very cold. High reflexivity of the snow, that is, three point is enough. Why Antarctica colder than Arctic? See, actually Arctic is an ocean or it's a water body. On the other hand, Antarctica is a landmass. Arctic is an ocean, this is water body surrounded by continents. On the other hand, Antarctica, this, it is a landmass surrounded by water, surrounded by oceans. So you know, temperature falls and rise gradually in water bodies, but on a landmass increases rapidly, decreases because of many reasons. One is continentality. So, this is the reason why Antarctica is colder than Arctic. Although both are at the polar region, means at the same latitude. The insulation of the sun is set, but the temperatures are different. The temperatures are different because of the type of land mass formation. One is land mass, the other is water body. Simple. There is a high surface elevation across at, at Antarctica because I has been built up on the top of the continental mass. Okay, why it is so dry? I'll be giving you this PowerPoint, so don't worry, you just read through. Arctic climate is important because, look here, this is Arctic region, this is North America, Asia, Europe. Now, this particular region, that is the Arctic Ocean, influences the temperature in this region. Temperature and pressure in this region and as we all know there is a oceanic circulation which is flowing from this up northern region to the southern region there is a circulation which flows here also there is a circulation same circulation here cold current warm current so what will happen this how this arctic ocean is related to the equator or related to India, for example, because this will influence this region and this region will influence the entire globe. Understood? That is how Arctic Ocean is important to climate studies or to atmosphere. And, with, uh, and gradually it is important to climate change and other related activities. There are certain op uh, Arctic phenomena. One is optical and acoustic phenomena. Just read through, you will understand. Water, sky, eye blinks. These are some phenomena. So just read through. Just for your sake, see, if it is water, sky, if there is a water in Arctic region, then the clouds above will be dark. The underside of the cloud will be very dark. Then it is considered on the surface it is water. That phenomena is known as water sky. The other one is eye blinks. When there is an eye mass and on the 
atmosphere when the underside of the cloud is very bright or white clear. <coughs> it is known as eye blink. Why this is important? This is important because of navigation. Before while explorer were going into Arctic region, these were very important signs for them. From very far distance they know if there is a white clear like this, they will just come to know there is an eye in that particular region. And if there is a dark surface on the underside of the cloud, they understand there is a water scene, water on the surface. Just go through. Why the importance of Antarctica? Why Antarctica is so important? See, <coughs> global warming is one of the most important events in geological history of the world. Dinosaurs completely disappeared because of climate change only. And may, there are many other activities. Now, the most undisturbed location on the planet Earth is Antarctica. Undisturbed. So they are the storehouse of climatic events of the past times. Means paleoclimatic condition. You can say the past climates are known as paleoclimates. So Antarctica is the storehouse. In Antarctica, there are many studies that are going on. We can find how past climates were. Why that is important? Because in order to see in environmental section, you might have already studied. I, I will touch upon that topic because that is not in my domain now. Mitigation strategy, adaptation, all those. But how to adapt, what to mitigate, at least you need to have some framework. At least you need to have some certain cold boss. At, at least you need to have some certain analysis of what will happen 20 years, what will happen 50 years. In policy, in climatic discussion, 2030, 2025, we always talk, we don't talk about 2015. <laughs> we talk about 2025, 2030 something. Why? Because we predict and accordingly we plan. If you, pl if you uh, go for a summit for, for achieving some target in 2020, 15, in the year 2015 itself, nothing will achieve. So you set a target. So you need a prediction. So in order to predict that, the key remains with the past climatic conditions. So in order to establish that knowledge, Antarctica becomes one of the most crucial locations on the earth. That's why, in spite of a lot of difficulties, country after country sent expedition to this place. And if you can mention some of India's recent scientific activities here, it might increase your quality of the answer. The second thing is environmental changes that are taking place in Antarctica. See, environmental changes that are taking place in the Gangetic Plain might be a very old answer for UPSC. So UPSC <laughs> looks for those fringe areas, okay. So environmental changes that takes place in Antarctica, the tool to interpret climate change is diadome. What are diadome? These are algae, actually. These are biota to the person. I have just drawn here, see. This is diadome. This is bacteria. So you can just imagine, correlate, this is carbon. The size, how minute, what is the characteristics like? So this is C. Because why diadome is taken as a tool to interpret climate change? Because diadome is, it reflects, or it reflects <coughs> in a very clear manner that any changes that is taking place in salinity, temperature, pH value, or the nutrient, etc. Means how it will change salinity, temperature, when there is certain change in climatic conditions, their temperature will change, salinity will change. So, at particular temperature, salinity, nutrient cycle, one type of diatom will be different. For another temperature, the sediments, the deposits, it will be different. So, by studying the deposits, layer by layer, slice by slice, we will be able to establish at this particular time period, such was the time of climate, at this particular time period, such was the climate. And we can correlate whether it was a marine deposit, whether it was a riverine deposit, what type of vegetation, what type of aquatic life <coughs> or 
uh, any other life forms. Okay, so that is the importance of diatom and how environmental changes are taking place in Antarctica. It has been known by the this creature. Okay, environmental changes in Arctic is very, it is very common. The polar bear they used to hunt the seal, and seal we all know it lives in a very cold ice environment. So now the Antarctica is melting. So the habitation of the seal is confining, confining to a very core Arctic region only. No, now, now a polar region have to say, for example, the polar bear waited for like hibernated for six months, <coughs> and on the other side, six months they were able to feed on the seal. But now what happening is the polar bear is hibernating not on, not for six months, for nine months, for eight months, because of the melting of the ice. The seal, the habitation of seal has been reduced. Okay, that is one of the most important, significant environmental changes that are taking place in Arctic region. And it is not because only seal and bear, polar bear, it will directly or indirectly affect the entire food cycle, nutrient cycle, and many other activities. Right? Impact of tourism, just go 